The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at Wheat Peak, realagriculture.com, and it's wheat season. How could you be more excited? Oh, wait a minute. It's dry. Oh my gosh, it's so dry, my beautiful wheat crop. Tons of calls coming in about, Pete, it's so dry. Just forget about the T3 fungicide. Wait just a minute. So first off, I'm going to say that wheat is a dry land crop. And Dr. Dave Hooker is going to say, Pete, no, you need moisture to make grain. And so yes, the highest yields always come from areas where when we get moisture. But think about 2022. Almost no rain, zero rain from June 1st. It's June 1st today, June 2nd. No rain, June 1st to August the 4th. Record wheat crop. Okay, so wheat will put its roots down deep and suck moisture. If you are on good soil and you've done everything right, man, the yield potential is still there. Why did we get record yields in 2022? because we had cool temperatures. Oh, but wait a minute. My gosh, the last week it's been record hot. So that works against us. The 14 day forecast is for sub 25 degree days and sub 18 degree nights. Those are critical temperatures. We want cool nights, 2022. We didn't turn the air conditioning on until July the 1st, basically. All of June cool, extended grain fill period, no rainfall, the wheat roots went deep, record wheat yields. So 2023, what's the decision? First off, we're drier as of June the 1st in 2023 than we were in 2022. 2022, we got about 60 millimeters, give or take, across southwestern Ontario. This year, about 25 millimeters. We're short 35 millimeters as of the 1st of June. That's about 10 bushels. That's an inch and a half. We generally figure seven to 10 bushels every inch of moisture. So, okay, we don't have quite that record yield potential, but there is a potential it could still rain. What does the data say? Again, we go to Dr. Dave Hooker, over 300 comparisons. An average of 8.8 .8 bushel per acre yield increase with a T3 fungicide. And that's not the current best fungicides that give us better plant health. That's the older T3 fungicides. So that 8.8 .8 is on the low end. But what's the range on that? Well, when you look at the drier years, then instead of 8.8 .8 bushels, it's 5.5 .5 bushels per acre. So where does that shake out? If you are in good wheat that has good soil, good moisture holding capacity, it's a six bushel per acre yield gain potential. Do the math. There's so many scenarios. If you don't already have tramp lines through the wheat field, well then your tramp loss is 1.5%. If you're on skinny tires, 120 foot boom, you lose 1.5%. On 100 bushel wheat, that's a bushel and a half. If it's five and a half bushels, I'm down to four bushels. So that matters. You could call the plane, but now your aerial application costs are 18 to $20 instead of what, 10 to 12 for ground rig. So that comes into play. Also, this year, you know, wheat always shows everything. It's such a wonderful crop that if you make a mistake, it just tells you like no other crop there is. If you've got one of those multicolored wheat fields that's up and down and all over because you didn't do the bright job on nitrogen or sulfur or drainage or, you know, already the yield is impacted, well, that six bushels shrinks back a little bit. So again, you factor that into the calculation. Last, if you did a T2 fungicide, if you've got a fungicide on in the last 10 days, well, then that six bushels drops to three bushels because that's just the additive effect. So there you have it. There's a whole bunch of things to consider. And there will be, by the way, it's so dry, 
I should have mentioned this earlier, the fusarium risk is basically zero. It is as close to zero as we could ever get. So now we are spraying a fungicide to protect ourselves from other leaf diseases late in the season and to give us better plant health. Plant health matters every day. We can keep the flag leaf green through grain fill every day longer is probably three more bushels. So you're gonna spray a T3 fungicide, you need to have a good wheat field that has looked good all year long. Take into account the tramp damage. If you already have tramp lines in the field, it's probably a benefit to tramp them again because those plants are starting to come back and they're gonna be green heads at harvest and just be ugly. Tramp them again, that's a win, not a loss. But if you don't have tramp lines in there, you got to take that into consideration. On really good wheat, on good dirt, it makes sense to me to keep putting the, like we put the inputs on, stay the course, do your best. On tough soil that's already starting to show drought stress, that's a little bit different story. Whatever you do, Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, and you just gotta grow great wheat.